So initially, we uh, developed a basic model of Slack, and that basic model was static with only one market where labor services were traded. We saw that one extension of the model was to keep the model static, but split our one market into two markets, separate a labor market and a product market with firms hiring labor on the labor market and selling services on the product market. Another natural extension that we're going to look at now is uh, to make the basic model dynamic. Um, and that's quite you know, important uh, to study a number of questions. Uh, so first of all, once you have a dynamic model, you're going to have uh, savings. And here we'll see how salt will save with bonds and you'll have therefore interest rates. So that will allow us to think about monetary policy. Um, so you know that's going to be uh, that's going to be quite important. Um, having a dynamic model also allows us to think about not only uh, creation of jobs but also job separations, um, and so think about not only outflow from unemployment but also inflow into unemployment. And so this allows us to have a more um, realistic depiction of uh, you know of the labor market. Um, so. To start with, let's look at the structure of our dynamic model and, and highlight the differences between this dynamic model and the static model. Um, so let's start with households. So exactly like in the static model, we'll have um, mass one of households. We'll assume that all the households are identical, so we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to do an analysis with a representative household. Um, and of course, you know, it's possible to uh, have an extension with heterogeneous household, exactly like we studied that extension um, in the basic model. Right, so uh, another difference here is that, so we will still assume that uh, real wealth enters the utility function. And that's because, um, as we so in the basic model, real wealth took the form of real money balances. Um, and the justification for real wealth into the utility function that real wealth provides social status and people value social status. So here, you know, we keep this, um, but in this dynamic model, real wealth is not going to be real money balances. We won't have any money. Um, all wealth uh, will be um, held in uh, bonds. Um, so this means that we will have uh, bonds into the utility, government bonds. A government bonds into the utility function. That's uh, because here in this dynamic model, um, all wealth is held as government bonds. So that's, uh, that's going to be uh, a key difference here. In our basic model, you know, we said that household had a product, you know, a productive capacity that we call K. So here we're going to dig a little bit uh, deeper and we'll assume uh, a little production function which will, which will allow us to separate between um, labor and um, kind of labor productivity. And labor and labor productivity will come together through the production function to give a capacity. Uh, so we're going to assume a linear production function. So we'll assume that capacity for a household is going to be A times L. So capacity, uh, that's you know, the number of services that uh, can be produced at any point in time. Uh, a, that will, so that's a new parameter that will introduce that labor productivity. 
So if you want, it captures the technology of the households. And then L, uh, <coughs> that's the amount of labor that the household supplies. Uh, so these are just the number of workers in the household. And, uh, you know, so of course L, so here all households, it's exactly in the basic, like in the basic model, all households are self-employed. Um, so the number of workers in the household, that's exactly, you know, and here we have a representative household. So the number of workers in the household L, uh, it's also the total number of workers in your economy. So that's the same as the labor force, you know, once you aggregate across all households. And of course, you know, through the, because there'll be a matching function on our market for labor services, um, some workers are going to be um, idle. Um, and so the number of, of workers that are actually working is going to be less than the number of uh, workers that the household supplies, uh, so less than the labor force. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So these are, I think these are the only difference with the basic model. So government will be a little bit different than in the basic model too. So in the basic model, the only thing that the government did was to um, issue money. Uh, here instead, we'll assume, because it's a dynamic model, we'll assume that the government issues uh, bonds, government bonds. Uh, so the bonds that are issued will be nominal bonds, meaning that they'll you know, they'll pay uh, nominal dividends. Of course, um, once you issue bond to borrow, um, you have to pay uh, interest to the bondholders. And so therefore the, the government has to uh, levy, uh, it has to set taxes and levy taxes to be able to pay for this uh, for this, to pay this interest to the bondholders. Uh, here we'll assume that the uh, taxes are lump sum. And this uh, tax revenue uh, will be used to finance uh, interest payments on the bond. Okay, and then a last, uh, so the government is going to issue these bonds and, and the bonds will be held by households. The household will use the bonds to save. Uh, so here I should say that, that they'll be held by households. Um, so here I should have said uh, that the households save with bonds, with these bonds that they, that they hold. <clears throat> right, and so then the, the last thing is that these bonds, uh, the households who hold bonds, they get interest payment. What is interest rates on these bonds? That's going to be set by the central bank, which is also part of the government. So central bank sets an interest rate. And again, this is a nominal interest rate. Uh, and this nominal interest rate, of course, govern interest payment on the bonds, on the government bonds. Okay, and then the last thing I should say about uh, the timing in the model. So this is a dynamic model, and but we'll assume that time is continuous. So we'll do a continuous time analysis, which would be uh, much simpler than having a discrete time analysis. Continuous 
continuous time, t, uh, which we assume starts at, uh, at time zero. Um, so this is, uh, this is our dynamic setup um, uh, with which uh, we're going to work. Uh, 